Imagine sitting in a classroom and not being able to hear what the teacher was saying. No matter how hard you try to listen, you just can't seem to understand the words that your teacher is speaking. As if this wouldn't be bad enough, now imagine that you're going to be tested over this information. How can you be expected to do well on the test if you couldn't even hear the lecture? This is a challenge faced by many deaf and hard of hearing students in our schools. The Individuals with Disabilities Act promises students with disabilities a free appropriate public education with an individualized education plan. Unfortunately, not all deaf and hard of hearing students are receiving an appropriate education. Due to poor communication and lack of accommodations, many deaf and hard of hearing students are denied equal access to information. But what causes deaf and hard of hearing students to be denied this access to information? First, deaf and hard of hearing students are not able to overhear information. They can only hear information that is directly given to them. This means that if a teacher is speaking to a student one-on-one, -on -one, hearing children will be able to overhear the information being given in that conversation. Deaf and hard of hearing children will not be able to hear that information and may not even be aware that the conversation is happening. This is called incidental learning. Due to an inability to incidentally learn, deaf and hard of hearing children can miss up to 90% of information that is provided for other children. How can teachers prevent deaf and hard of hearing students from missing this information? There are several accommodations that can be made to reduce the effects of this issue. It is common for teachers to turn around and write on the board while speaking to their students. This behavior might be okay in most classrooms, but in a classroom with a deaf or hard of hearing student, this teacher habit could cause a deaf or hard of hearing student to miss a lot of information. Turning your back to a deaf or hard of hearing student directs the sound away from them and takes away their ability to read your lips. It's also helpful to repeat student answers and to take turns during group discussions to make sure that the deaf or hard of hearing student is able to hear everything that is happening in the classroom. Some of you might be thinking, well, if the student has hearing aids or, or cochlear implants, then they're just like hearing students and they don't need accommodations, right? No, that is a big misconception. Sound that is processed through a hearing aid or cochlear implant is not the same as a sound that is heard directly through the ear. The BBC would like to announce that the next scene is not considered suitable for family viewing. It contains scenes of violence involving people's heads and arms getting chopped off, since the sound that a deaf or hard of hearing student hears is different than what we hear, these students need processing time. An article titled In Servicing the Classroom Teacher describes this issue. Any speech from further away will likely be heard, but not all the parts of speech will be perceived like putting a puzzle together with missing pieces. Deaf and hard of hearing children need extra time to find these missing pieces. A classroom teacher is not providing equal access to information if they do not give deaf and hard of hearing students processing time. Teachers can speak at a normal pace, repeat important words and phrases, provide the student an interpreter with notes before the lesson, and possibly even provide a peer note taker for the student. These accommodations limit the amount of demands being placed on the student and allow them to have more processing time. It is important to remember that accommodations always need to be made, not just when the teacher is lecturing. If the class is having a discussion in which everyone is contributing, the discussion needs to be controlled. If students are speaking out of turn or if students are talking at the same time, it is almost impossible for the deaf or hard of hearing student to follow the conversation. Teachers need to make sure students speak in turn and student answers should be repeated for clarification. Another classroom situation that can pose problems for deaf and hard of hearing learners is the use of a video for instruction. Imagine watching a video with the volume muted and then being asked to take a test about the information that you learned in that video. This is what it's like for deaf and hard of hearing students when the teacher does not provide closed captions. Teachers also need to be aware of the amount of background noise in their classroom. Background noise, such as a pencil sharpener, kids in the hallway, or a lawnmower outside can be very distracting for students, but it can also make it impossible for a deaf or hard of hearing student to hear the information being presented in the classroom. Teachers need to make sure that background noise is limited and that they repeat themselves when background noise is present. 
As you can see, there are many accommodations that can and should be made for deaf and hard of hearing students. It is important to remember that just as all hearing students learn differently, so do all deaf and hard of hearing learners. Hearing or non-hearing, each student is an individual. There is no one-size-fits-all approach to teaching a deaf or hard of hearing student. The accommodations suggested in this video are important to know, but it is even more important to ask your student what will work best for him or her. This is the best way to accommodate for any student. To review, teachers need to make accommodations for their deaf and hard of hearing students. Teachers should avoid turning their back to the class and provide students with processing time. In order to provide students with processing time, teachers can speak at a normal pace, repeat important vocab words and phrases, and provide the student with notes before the lesson. Group discussions should be controlled and student answers should be repeated. Teachers should also provide closed captions and eliminate any background noise. But most importantly, remember that each student is an individual and accommodations should meet the needs of each student.